your relationship with Brazil? Well, when I was in the armed forces, I was stationed, uh, and during the, my 27-year career, I was uh, stationed in uh, the Panama Canal Zone uh, as part of the United States Armed Forces Southern Command. Uh, frequently traveled into most of Latin America. I visited all but uh, one Latin American nation. The only nation I have not visited is Cuba, uh, for obvious reasons, uh, during my career. Uh, and I made many frequent visits to in and out of Brazil. I uh, was into Rio, Sao Paulo, uh, Natal, Dakar. I, I, I went across the Atlantic to Dakar by way of uh, uh, Brazil. And uh, one of my most memorable flights, as a matter of fact, was over Brazil at night on the way to Montevideo. And uh, we were over the, uh, over the, uh, the Amazon jungle and there was a, an electrical storm. It was one of the most magnificent things I have ever seen. Uh, I remember it so well. But I visited the country many, many times and, uh, and al always remember it with great fondness. I have many friends, uh, aviation historians, great aviation historians in Brazil, and I've always counted them amongst my favorite people. And you have your the Brazilian flag on your... I do. I do so, have yeah. the this, the, in fact, this coat is one of my most prized possessions. I was uh, associated with Senor Rudo Botello, uh, who uh, developed the wonderful replica de Moiselle, Alberto Santos Dumas de Moiselle, uh, as well as a replica 14 Beast. I have examined both of them. I know him and his, uh, of course, he's now deceased, unfortunately, uh, but his wonderful and beautiful daughter as well. In Sao Paulo. So, talking about Brazil, uh, who you are in front of, uh, behind of you, you have a replica, replica of the Wright Brothers airplane 1903. 1903. So, yeah, 1903. So, who invented the airplane? I think the, the, it's, a, it's a simple question to ask, who invented the airplane? I, I like to think as an aviation historian, as a practicing aviation historian, that there were a number of pioneers involved in that process that led us to the aircraft that we take for granted today. Definitions in this context are very important. The, the first and most important definition is who achieved powered, sustained, controlled flight first. And, and was able to document that successfully, both in terms of photographs, witnesses, and engineering uh, uh, data of all kinds. That has to be the Wright brothers, who made four very successful flights on the 17th of December, 1903. At the very same time, however, our friend Alberto Santos Dumont had already flown many times, many times. They weren't in fixed-wing aircraft as we know them today. They were in dirigibles uh, of his own design. He'd flown over Paris extensively. He'd also designed a number of, uh, of aircraft designs that didn't come to fruition. But in 1906, he did in fact fly his famous 14 Beast. The first flight didn't end quite the way he had hoped. He did crash, but many of the concepts that he was able to develop and demonstrate in the 14 Beast later became standard features in aircraft of the future. So even though the Wright brothers, I think, have to take the credit for the first sustained, controlled, powered flight. It was actually a collaborative effort. He certainly wasn't number one, but he was certainly number two. <laughs> Fantastic. Wonderful.